her here in uh, Consul General of New York. And uh, uh, in this book, uh, Fearless Governance, I know this. Uh, there is, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've been reading an article about that. So, so why do you feel that you want to launch this book in the Consul General of New York here? So, um, we all know Kiran Bedi has done such amazing work to inspire people here all over the world and in India. She has so many records she has created. <laughs> to count, it will be impossible to count them. But nine years ago, I just want to give you a small background of the organization that we have here. Nine, year, near, nine years ago, Eric, uh, when Didi was visiting Kiranji, um, Eric invited her to his house. Eric Kumar, he's my godson and a community leader here. Uh, he invited her to his house and he had invited about 30 people and um, Didi was speaking there and she had just, people had just come to meet her there and after her speech and the work she has done in, in India Vision Foundation and Love Jyoti for all the prisoners and underprivileged children um, she said, am I just going to meet you this one time or is it going to be always? And so she suggested that it's a group of 30, let's call it G30. And that's how G30 was born in Eric Kumar's house mm -hmm. uh, for India Vision Foundation. So we are a chapter for India Vision Foundation that Kiran Bediji runs in India. who are doing amazing work, most of the people um, maybe you can get um, the video we can share with you that you can show. Um, it's it's so emotional what she has done, how she has transformed the lives of underprivileged children to what they have become today. It's a success story. So it's a, an absolute honor to host her, to invite her to the consulate, and to share with you all the privilege. Thank you so much. And my question will be to Dr. Kiran Bediji uh, about her book. So that I just want to uh, ask her association with Puducherry uh, uh, and uh, uh, five years. Uh, how was that? And give something. Uh, you know, which will see when they read uh, Fearless Governance and bit about the book. First of all, I want to thank Pam Quatra, who's on my left, and Eric Kumar, who's on my right, for hosting me and bringing me back to New York after a long gap. What also brings me is a UN inv uh, invitation. So two things have combined. Um, United Nations invitation to be at the conference from first, 31st and 1st, along with the Pam Quatras and Eric's invitation to be uh, bringing this book which had not reached America yet, and then the love for my family, which I had not visited them in the US while the family kept coming to India, but I had, it was overdue, so my family played a very important role. So we combined the three, the UN, the book, and my family. So this is three in one visit. But I'm so glad that Pam and Eric combined to see that the first book in America is given the Consul General to Mr. Rakesh uh, Jaiswal. I'm very proud of that, that he uh, has accepted my first book, and I'm very proud of that. Um, Kam Kum uh, Ruchira Kamboj will also be part of the book on the event of the 1st uh, September, after I finish with the UN. So I'm looking forward to meeting Ruchira. Ruchira and I work together. At the, at the United Nations when she was younger in the permanent commission as a member uh, representing India while I was as a police advisor here. She's still young but <laughs> younger is what she She's still younger, younger in, uh, in that Oh, uh, rank. Oh, I'm okay, saying okay, that. Sorry. Younger in the rank. She's grown now. Now she's a permanent rep secretary. Yes. Then she had begun her service from here, the UN. Anyway, all these things are now. So the background is this book when you read this book, uh, it gives you ideas how can you govern well, how can you administer well despite all odds and challenges. If you are determined being in the right position 
And I was in the right position. I was the Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry. I was in the right position. I had the laws, the rules to govern. I had also a team of officers of the Indian Administrative Service, the IPS, and the State Civil Services. I also had the uh, the uh, community, the the NGOs, etc. I had people. I had officials. I had the law. I had the rules, and I had the whole setup of the Rajnivas Secretariat. Question is, what do I do with it? I decided to transform it and address all the ails of Puducherry administration one by one. That's why it's called fearless governance. Because when you transform things, you are breaking through vested interests. You're changing things, and change is discomforting. For instance, when you are making things more honest, you're making things more transparent. You're making things more accountable. It it hurts those or shakes up those who who is not used to accountability, or who have a vested interest in doing it in different ways. I went by the letter of law and the needs of the people. Like for instance, another, the Rajnivas, which was my residential office, and the office of the large. It's a Raj. Pondicherry is a beautiful place, and Rajnivas was thrown open to people's. Contact every day for two hours. As a lieutenant governor, I was meeting a common man two hours a day, without any appointment. They could come first, come first, sir. So come and tell me anything, a feedback or a problem. But we didn't only listen; we acted upon it. We went to the spot to see the problem, and we removed the problems one by one, five years continuously. So this book documents the transformative process of administration, and it tells you. What are the ways which we transformed? What are the things which are required for a situation when you want to change things for the better? And what are the challenges which are likely to come when you change? What are the vested interests which will come in your way, and how do you deal with them? For instance, here in this case, you will have a chapter where every time we implemented what the government of India wanted us to implement, which is law, like for instance, direct transfer of money from the Jhandan accounts straight away. Rice, rather than being given in kind, money for rice be given straight to the bank accounts of the thousands of people. That was the government of India policy. Now there was a vested interest not to give money directly, but to buy, contract, and then give in kind. When I said no, that's the policy of government of India. We'll implement it. Whereas the 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 certain vested interest didn't want it. But when we stood on to it, we were taken to the courts. We were challenged by law. The government of India and the Raj Divas stood together and dealt with it, and we won every time because it was based on letter of law and the goodness of the people. So what I'm saying, what you asked me this question, what is in this book? This book is the transformative process of how you can do it, why must you do it, and who all you must work together to, despite all odds. This good news is this book was released by nobody other than Indira Nui. We did it through a web release during the COVID year, and she called it the blueprint of good governance, which is valid for very good for private and the public sector, because these are practices of administration which made it happen. So, did you have any writer's blocks or any challenges when writing this, or did you feel that uh, there are few things which you wanted to improve, few things which you didn't want to? Improve? Whatever is written here is evidence-based. It's also in the QR code. So if you go on the book, you want to see a video of that, you can see it on QR code. You want to see a document of it, you can QR. There's nothing, there is nothing secret or confidential. It's all administration, which is open and transparent at that time. So there's no compromise on confidentiality of administration. That's why I based based it on evidence. So whatever I had evidence on, I've written. What I did not have evidence, but I knew. That I could say I knew it by hand. I did not write that. So this book is based on evidence, but it it, it puts in place exactly what happens, and there's plenty despite uh, anything else. You can't ask for more. In fact, and it's storytelling. It's not long chapters, not non-stop chapters. It's a three and a half page story with visuals, with the pictures, because all taken. I had started to write this book from the time I. Took over as lieutenant governor. How do I write this? I start to document my process of change, news clippings, photographs, my little videos which I took on my iPhone, 
all the media reports, everything was fully documented. All the orders I gave, all the, or the instructions I gave, all very well documented. I had a library of my own. So I had to just go back to my own library. That's, thank you so much. And uh, uh, who is uh, I mean, this uh, leadership uh, predominantly? Is it only for those who are in this segment? Or is it for all and sundry who want to learn fearless governance? Or, I mean, is it? Uh, predominant for one particular sector of uh, who could tenure. who could be better to say this than Indira Nui herself when she says what's written this book this written the back page of the book let me read what she said she released the book and she said fearless governance is a blueprint it's a blueprint for good and effective governance the leadership practices cut across public and private sectors who could be better than and she said it on her own because she only read the book uh, before she released it. So imagine, uh, and I was surprised when she said this. I can share with you the clipping of what she said. I can share with you, I can mail it to you because that's, by the way, if you go to my website, kiranbedi.com, her clip of release of this book, of this statement on her own verbally is on my website. You can, you can take the clip. And is it going to be a beacon for uh, those who are seeking uh, career in governance? I, do they have a choice? <laughs> the point is many youth who sit for the Union Public Service Commission examinations, this book shall help them. Because this will be asked. This will become a question to be asked in the interviews. And I bet it's unavoidable. And I haven't, I haven't written this book to sell. I've written this book to guide them way. I've been uh, circulating the soft copy of this with friends and for whoever asks for it. It's available. Anybody who emails me on office at gmail.com, I send them the soft copy. By the way, the uh, proceeds of this book are also donated to my India Vision Foundation, to all causes. So my object is to, to document the history of this transformation and also guide the future leadership. They can add to it. They can borrow ideas from it. Because administration is always growth, evolving. Thank you so much. I just will digress a bit from the book before I ask you one more question and I'll ask the other host, Eric as well. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a good question to all of us, but I'm asking uh, a friend of the media here uh, in CG, I mean, what gave you that grit and courage in life? Wipe off all that is wrong. What was that element inside you which stirred you up? That's my growth. I'm only honest to myself. I'm honest to my upbringing. I'm honest to my habits which I inculcated as a student or as a young police officer. And then I kept growing. I've just stuck to what my beliefs. My belief is that when you are in public service, you have to be honest to the people to whom, for you whom you are. And uh, I'll ask you the last question, but I'll ask Eric G. I mean, uh, how is it posting, uh, Dr. Kiran Bedi? Tell us your association with them. So, I met Dr. Kiran Bedi about 12 years ago through Pep G, who's my godmother. And it was about nine years ago when we had a small, small meet and greet in my house. G30 for India Vision Foundation was formed. So we are a 5013C. Uh, we have a lot of sponsors from the US who adopts children of India Vision Foundation. The good part about our organization is every single dollar which comes to the G30, which is a 5013, every single penny goes to India. We do host events every few years when Kiranji is in, in, in New York. Uh, it's being sponsored by um, the sponsors or the corporate us. Uh, September 1st, this Thursday, we're doing an event in Mint in Garden City, Long Island, where we already have a confirmation from our host committee. A lot of kids have been already adopted, and we will showcase the profiles of those kids. And also there is a video which shows the alumni where those children who have became very successful in their career, right now they are doctors, police officers, civil servants, and they were part of, as a child, they were part of the India Vision Foundations many, many years ago. So it's an honor to host Kiranji every time she's in New York. 
and it's a blessing, I should say. Honor is less word, it's a blessing. So I will end with that. Give all our audience uh, your shout out uh, for PLS governance and you know summarize something for them so that you know they'll, uh, everyone gets stirred up and will read it. If you read it, you get very good ideas for good administration. And you may be administering a school, you may be administering your own office, you may be administering anything, it gives you ideas. It gives you great, for instance, give you, give you one idea. I had a habit of everyday meeting 101. That means if you're a school principal, you can do every day a, a session with a school child. You can do a session with a school teacher. Listen to them. Find out what they feel about their work. I used to do it with every day an officer. And I never used to say, Kaam ke bare batao, ik, have you done all this? And, no work. Tell me about your family. How are your children? What's your spouse doing? Can we be of any help? Can you, are you happy? I was to ask, are you happy at work? Are you at the right place? Because a happy person at work means good work, right? So it was not saying I told you to do this, why have you not done this? No minutes were recorded of that. That's called chapter 101 in this. So you'll get ideas. So you may be a lieutenant governor, or you may be a principal of a school, or maybe a CEO. 101 is needed if you're dealing with so many team members. What's the problem? What's your issue? How many people do it? They don't talk about family. They say, oh, no, that's separate. It's not separate. If you want a happy person, contented person at work, then talk to that person. And then mentor that person. Guide, be a parent to that person. So there's something called parenting, something called mentoring, something called supporting, something called leading. You'll get ideas. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anna. Just one more quick question I wanted to ask. Can you uncover the we have seen in social media everywhere uh, about women empowerment? Your take on it? Look, everybody writes about women empowerment from the backgrounds they have. It's for the women to choose what they want. If a woman is deciding to empower herself, nothing stops her. If she has access to opportunities, if she has access to facilities, she can build on that. It's up to her. It's absolutely, it, however she can generate and garner support system. She has also to have the capability to garner. There is support. Does she have the capability to garner? So I think it varies from family to family. No two situations are similar. My kind of similar situation is not similar with the other. My duty was to make the best of what I had. I, my only one message is, begin with what you have, make the best of what you have at any stage of your life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pamji just uh, wanted to ask, you know, it's a pleasure uh, to all of us that you're hosting Dr. Kiran Bedi ji here in uh, 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 CG New York, Conflict General uh, New York here with uh, uh, Eric ji. And uh, just wanted to find out, you know, why you wanted, uh, I mean, what uh, provoked you to host this and your association with Dr. Kiran Bedi and uh, how is your heart beating uh, for this event today? So actually my journey started, there was an international religious um, conference and um, Northwestern Mutual had actually uh, sponsored it and Kiran Bedi ji was one of the speaker there and when I heard that I was like so overjoyed, went and met with her and we had tea together, lunch together in that whole uh, conference for two, three days that we were there together. And after that, um, Annu, her younger sister who, lives, who lived in uh, San Francisco at the time, she and I remained in touch. And then she had come to UN as the peacekeeping police chief. And so we grew as a family. And then one day, while on her visit, she was, um, Eric had invited her to his home. Mm -hmm. And she had come, and there were about 30 people who had come to meet her. And after 
networking and meeting she said is it going to be the last meet or are we going to meet every year and so everybody said we want to meet you every year so she said okay then we are going to start a group of 30 g30 for india vision foundation and that's where that's when india vision foundation was born in eric kumar's house and we have been for last 3 years we have been hosted any because of pandemic but <clears throat> since then we have had one function every year um to to support india vision foundation children it's a very emotional journey of the kids there was a video that i would love to share with you all um the prisoners children kiranji felt the no fault of these kids um they are being punished or are going to live in prison and that's not fair so she started this from when they were little kids first she put them in nursery right in the prison and started educating them and it just grew from there <clears throat> today somebody is a doctor a lawyer a policeman and and it's it's very rewarding so we are very honored and here she was in pondicherry as a governor and wrote this fearless governor's book and we are very excited to host it and to give the first book to the council general um from kirinji and we are very honored and we are looking forward to see the ambassador un ambassador ruchi ruchira kamboj who is coming and be the guest of honor for our event on september 1st at the mint restaurant which eric has mostly 75% he has organized <laughs> and kudos to eric for doing all that work and uh, this is what inspired me to come and do this thanks so thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.